I think the way in which, and I you know, will say, we have not necessarily at least gotten to the tip of the iceberg, right, of figuring out how fully to engage in that way in museums. What I will say is that for many of us, at least at the Studio Museum, it's provided an important point of contact to say that we can have both things happening at the same time, right? That we can have an exhibition curated by a curator, but that we also have many different spaces, mostly through social media, where the idea of the audience voice or the tour that's created through someone else's voice and vision can also be shared widely. I do think, though, there's still much more that we need to do in museums to fully engage with this, to fully find a way to, on the one hand, satisfy what I think many of us know, that our audiences do come and want some expertise. They want the experience that comes from that, but also want to engage with it as well. So that this is a place of deep work, um, deep, interesting work. And I think many of us are committed to really existing and, and with our colleagues in other worlds, right, where this has become so much more um, the norm than, say, in the museum world, to figure out ways in which that we can and really allow audiences that level of engagement with our collections, with the works of art, and with us very directly as a conversation. I think it's incredibly exciting. I, I think it's actually, the, the, underneath the question is, I think, a, a, a larger uh, challenge, which is how do all of us, especially mm -hmm. those of us who work in physical spaces, yeah move from being analog thinkers mm -hmm. to digital thinkers. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean digital in the sense of, mm -hmm. you know, technology and electronics. Mm -hmm. I mean digital in terms of a completely network, um, almost hierarchical free mm -hmm. environment. How do we learn yeah. to think that way in order to enable a whole range of new ideas, processes, relationships to emerge? Mm -hmm. Clearly my generation, is not going to succeed completely. We'll adapt, we'll change, but it'll be one or two more generations before you have people who never actually thought in an analog way to begin with. Uh, and that will produce a very different uh, context. Already I see that just in the different difference between curators who are in their late 40s and curators who are in their late 20s and early 30s. You don't think of that as much of a gap, but it's a huge gap in terms of how they were taught uh, mm -hmm. at school and at graduate school. So I think we're in the midst of a really interesting mm -hmm. change. Uh, but I'd just add underneath that, for all of the value of crowdsourcing and audience participation, you have to remember as well that expertise, knowledge, is a, is a really valuable commodity. You wouldn't actually have uh, a doctor operate on an aneurysm that you have based on crowdsourcing. You'd actually hope that that doctor had been well-trained and knew what to do, even if the, there was a, a lot of people who said, don't do it this way. Uh, and there's a lot of knowledge that curators have about the mm -hmm. objects that they work with. And mm -hmm. so it's really trying to strike a balance between sharing that high degree of expertise along with encouraging a broad public uh, engagement with it.